Greetings hobbyists, this is Artan and Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at geometry node tools and geometry node modifiers for Blender 4 onwards. So Blender 4 is coming out in November 2023 and if you want it ahead of time, as with other alpha and beta test versions, you can go to Blender Downloads, scroll down and you've got the Download Blender Experimental and you can find the beta version of Blender 4. Now with any beta or alpha version there are going to be potential problems and conflicts with add-ons that you've got, but generally the beta versions are pretty stable and it gives you a chance to have a look at the tools ahead of time. So there's a few new tools that I'm particularly excited about. One of the minor ones, if you go to file, there's now a save incremental version, which is really cool. And it'll just save a new version of your file, adding one to whatever your previous file name was. So if it was test two, it now become test three and it doesn't overwrite the old version. But of all the new things, the geometry node tools and the geometry node modifiers and the way they now interact with Blender is just absolutely fantastic. Now I have seen a few videos covering these. For example, Ask NK has a really good one but there are a couple of elements that I think was missed out there. So if you have seen that video, this is still gonna be useful to you. Now to demonstrate this, I'm actually gonna go into a file where I keep all of my assets. So I just have one file to link to, and then I'm gonna bring this up and we're gonna start having a look at what we can do now in geometry nodes. Now the first thing you should notice is there is a button here, which has modifier or tool, and these are gonna appear in different areas. For example, the modifiers are going to be things that you can then set up to be in your modifier panel. So if you've got an object, you can add modifier. I'll also say they've changed this, so you've now got these under the individual submenus. I'm gonna be honest, I don't like that. I prefer the old version which showed them all, but each their own. And then you've got the tools, which are now going to be something that you can then set up and use inside either sculpt mode, or you can do it in edit mode. And that's gonna make this really powerful. What I'm going to do is just bring in a cube to demonstrate this. Let's move this over here so we haven't got everything else in the way. And then we'll just change this slightly so I can demonstrate what we're doing. So let's just go into edge mode, control and B that. And then we'll just move some of these vertices up. And then we can just come into face mode and let's I to inset that face. So this is going to be a good example. So what I might want is a tool so that say I want these faces and I don't want anything else, we can set up a geometry node tool for that. Now normally you can just shift D, escape, and then P, and then separate by loose parts. That is definitely more time than if you could do this in let's say one or two clicks. Not by a lot, but enough. So let's have a look at how we'll do this. And this involves probably one of the most exciting bits of this, as well as the fact that it makes a tool set. So let's click new. We've got our geometry nodes here. And all I'm gonna do is set this up. So I'm going to delete the geometry of this. Now you will note that this doesn't actually show up here. It's not doing anything at this point. And we do want to name this. So let's say, delete other. So at the moment this will delete everything, but interestingly we've got a selection and this is going to be the bit that I think is going to make a massive difference to geometry nodes. So if I just type in selection, we now have a attribute node which only works in tools at this point, which is called selection. And that means the parts that I've selected on my mesh. So now we've got a really quick way of selecting what we want to use our geometry node on. So if I just drag that in here, now what I can do is come up to this panel, which has appeared, click on that, delete other, and at the moment it's deleting the wrong things. So that's not what we want. We want to keep these two bits that have been selected. So for that, we just need to use some maths. So I'm just gonna type in not, and we want a Boolean maths. So we want to delete everything that's not selected, drag that in there, and we don't want to delete the points because otherwise there's gonna be some interlinking geometry. So let's just go with edges. Now if I come to this and delete other, we just get those two parts remaining. So a really quick, easy tool to use that we've just created that's just gonna be a bit faster than it would normally be if we were doing this the traditional way. And that's what this is gonna be about, just saving little bits of time. So this is all well and good, but how do we get this usable in other files? Well, it's quite easy actually now, and this used to be a total pain. All you need to do is come to the name, right click, mark as asset, and then if you come over to where all your geometry nodes are, this is my file for where I keep lots of them, so I've got lots of others. I've got this delete other, and then I want to set up somewhere for this to be. Now at the moment, this will automatically just be in this drop down menu, but you might want to have other things as well. So you can break this up into tool groups. If let's say I make a new catalog and call this GeoTools, go to all, find my delete other, put it into GeoTools, and you'll see now 
that at the top here, it doesn't have that symbol. It has the word GeoTools and I've got Delete Other. Now, because this is set up to be where I keep all my assets, I can now save this and then come into any other file. Do make sure that you've actually opened a new file. If you're just swapping between files, this won't automatically be there. You'll also have to open up your preference menu if you haven't got this set up. Go to Path Files and you can add a new library for where you get your assets. So just click plus and then set it to the path where you've got that saved. But if I go into, let's say, face mode, you'll notice we've now got our geo tools and I can just select those and then delete other. The other thing that we can do if you really want to is you can assign this to a shortcut, which means that now that's going to be there to use as a really quick shortcut. But to be honest, coming up here and selecting that is not particularly long winded. Now, if you wanted to, you could also set up within your geo tools more sub catalogs so you can break these up if you've got lots of them. So that's going to be really useful. So I'm just going to quickly make another geometry node set up to show something else that we can do, which is really cool. Again, I'm going to use this selection element and I've just realized I need to have a join geometry here. Otherwise, this is going to start deleting everything. So let's just drag that up and bring that in. The other thing that's really exciting about this is as well as making a tool, you have the ability to control what you see in your menu. And what I mean by the menu, it's this box that's at the bottom left hand corner after you've done the operation. So let's say, for example, I've got this where I can select some faces, let's say there, and then I can come in and then extrude and scale. And each time it's going to extrude some bits out. Oh, I do need to put that so it's just edges. So let's try that again. There we go. So this is all great. But what I want to be able to do is do this multiple times and control things. And you normally do that in geometry nodes by exposing certain elements of this. So if I just put in a input, there we go. And I want to put in, let's say, I want to have how far it's going to offset being shown. I want to have the scale being shown. I want if it's individual being shown. And then I want to have the number of iterations being shown. What that's going to do is now put these on here. And if I let's go into face mode and select those faces or something like that and then go here and extrude and scale, you'll notice that we now have set which we're going to have for our options. These are all the exposed elements that we put down to our group input. So now I can say this happens multiple times. I can control the scale offset. I can scale that and I can control whether it's individual or not really quickly because we've got these exposed. And as always, as soon as you click off, that has gone. Now, realistically, I've just did that really quickly. I also probably need a merge by distance. Let's just check. So yes, I would need a merge by distance here, but you get what's going on. So the other thing we can do is as well as setting up tools, we can do what we used to do of setting up modifiers. But now, once again, this has been made much easier to save. And what will happen is now, if you do save it to your assets, it will always be in your add modifier panel. So let's just have a look at a really quick example of this. So I'm just going to bring in a quad sphere so that I've got this over here because that's what I'm going to want to do. Now, I'm just using this to test it as I'm going. So what I'm going to do is new and we're going to call this instance on points. And all I'm going to do is set up an instance on points, which will just be the standard. So I'm going to get this working off an object info node which will be that. I want to be able to select this, so I need to expose that. So I can select one of my objects, let's have it as that. And then we've got our scale, which we want to be able to affect as well. And we'll just leave it at that for now. But importantly, we're gonna save this. So mark this as an asset, and then we'll now on our all have this as one of our assets. And again, you can set up a custom menu for this as well, or it will just be there in unassigned. Oh, I should point out, just because of the way this works with geometry nodes, I'm going to shift an A and need a realize instances on this, and then I will file and resave it. Otherwise, this won't work. It won't create solid geometry, and that would be a problem. So, a bit of a blunder there. So, let's open up a new blend file and see why this is going to be so useful. So, now we've done that, let's mesh and bring in a cube, and let's go into edge mode. Let's control and B those. And we'll just use this as a demonstration. So I'm going to shift and D, come into face mode, and I'm going to eye that face. And let's come up to my geo tools and delete everything else. So now I've only got this face here. I can go to add modifier, instance on points, shift A, mesh, and then bring in a quad sphere. Let's scale that down to what I want my rivets to be, maybe a little bit more. 
apply the scale, come back to my original object that is here, and select that. And now we've got our rivets. I don't think there's going to be much of a quicker way of making rivets than that. What's really cool about this is if I go into edge mode, I can always come to here, control and E, and then subdivide, and it will automatically put in a new rivet. And, I mean, this is going to be such a time saver. Also, if I really want to, I could vertex mode, select that vertex, and then control and X, and I'll just get rid of rivets as quickly and easily as I want. I honestly can't think of anything that's happened in Blender in recent years that's more of a game changer than this. The ability to add these modifiers in so quickly is just absolutely amazing. So hopefully you found that useful. It was quite a lot to put everything in one video, but I think it's really important you know about the difference between tools and modifiers. I'm going to do another video on one of the other features that's new to Blender 4 that I find quite exciting, but we'll also do a bit of a review of that and see actually is this as important a change compared to some free add-ons that you can get. So if you want to know when that video is out, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you know when new content is released. Or if you want it ahead of time, if you're not part of the Patreon, you can subscribe for a couple of dollars a month and that will give you these videos a week ahead of time and ad free. Have a great day guys.